we'll see. Well, let's go <laughs> with round number three in this grand open qualifier. We have a very sweet uh, matchup. Gobern with hand and hard and scales against Temur Tempo uh, with Philip uh, Javier. Talk us about the matchup. Well, hard and scales is a synergy based deck, artifacts. Like you could say it's like the, the hair of the uh, old affinity decks, like artifact creatures with counter synergies. Obviously, the namesake card of the deck, Hard and Scales, is a very big <laughs> part of the deck. Like everything puts counters, and with this card, all the counters are doubled, right? So it's a big card. But also got a big help uh, and a big boost in power with Agatha Souls Cauldron. Because with Cauldron, you can use copies all these best creatures' abilities. You know, like if you lose a uh, Ravager, you can just copy with Cauldron ability. So it's very powerful, you know. Uh, suddenly, all your cards are wow, so big. crazy! It's wow. crazy. It is <laughs> the best Cauldron deck, you know. Like it's super good. <laughs> and on the other side, we have uh, Timur Tempo. Timur, yeah. Murtide even. Uh, this this is a deck like it's very similar to Murtide. I think it was popularized by Menguchi, yes. our beloved Menguchi, where he just asked question read to the Murtide, and actually found out the card was very good in the Trisha matchups. And the version we see here. It's very similar to that. It's like, you know, has the usual suspects like DRC, Ragavan, Murtad Region, but also the new Tishana Stadlander, as well as the Crescent Druid. I think this deck should be a little bit better than the the normal ones against the scales, because the way sometimes scales wins the games is just by actually grinding, because Sagas and Cauldrons are very good at grinding. And this deck should be a little bit better. Keep in mind that the green splash is very small. Like it's like two Crescent Druids only. But that's already, you know, enough. Like, if you draw this card, it can be a huge impact in the game. Yes. Wow, so sweet. Uh, this matchup, a uh, Cauldron deck against a Murtite deck, but a bit different. Yeah, I mean, also Cauldron, not only a great card to, you know, combo with the scales, also Cauldron has a secret mode, and he, I call it the first mode, where Cauldron can actually just exile random cards from the opponent graveyard, right? Which can actually keep the Murtite or the Delirium of the DRC off. So it's an, an additional uh, layer of disruption for for Govern. I don't know which is fav which deck is favorite in the matchup. Uh, I will say it's gonna be kind of close. I will, like me, this is one of the matchups where I will say if the scales has scales, it's ahead, and if it doesn't, it's behind. But overall, I will expect this to be like very fifty fifty. -ish. We'll see though. Yes, will we see if this uh, hardened scales is the best cauldron deck? We have a lot of decks with cauldron. Like uh, Golgari Yagmoth, Yagmoth, for example. Yeah, another deck that actually uses the the Cauldron very well. I think Cauldron is better here, but it's also sharing more weaknesses, like artifact hate cards, which, by the way, define this matchup a lot. Like I've played the the side of scales against Mordet quite a bit, and for me, the most important part playing scales is how many cards like Brotherhood's End the opponent has. Like the many many cards that kill artifacts will actually make the matchup bad for scales, and if the Mordet player plays one to zero. Brotherhood's End and not too many explosives, I think the matchup then is good for scales. And so I, th I think that's that's one of the most important parts, which is related to what we were talking before, right? Like yes. the cyborgs actually define the matchups a lot, right? Be and you only have 15 cyborg slots, so you cannot play 10 cards against scales, 10 cards against rhinos. It's impossible, so you have to pick your fights. So we'll choose, see. Choose Philip, wisely. You know, yeah, yeah, choose yeah. wisely and you know, accept some matchups will become wars. Yes, this Hangar Hang Walker is in the graveyard, and uh, it's turn out to... Yeah, he got bolt it got bolted, uh, yes, but it's still like it two, to two tokens. These tokens are more annoying than it will seem, because they block Mortis very well, and they are also artifacts for the Ursa Saga account. This is a deck that doesn't put creatures with Saga as much as decks like Hammer, but still, you know, like, if Construct comes to play here, it's going to be a large one. Expressive iteration. Building this turn for the more tight de deck. Getting a bolt, but... I mean, the bolt actually doesn't have a great target. Whoa, yeah, that, the game's whoa. over, but right? he's conceded. Yeah. He doesn't have a land, right? Yeah, well, that's a, was, that was a somewhat f easy game for Gobern in this situation, but he knows the tough games are the cyber games. Like, I think game one, if you're playing a scales on the play and play it on one scale, uh, you know, things are good for you. You're on the play... You have your key card. It's all good. Your opponent doesn't have any sweeper. Yes. That's, you know, that, that's because you know how comfortable it is to play aggro and know when your opponent doesn't have sweepers, don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like you're like, I'm going to just play my creatures, play my threats. It's, life is good, but you also know, for cyber, you're always like, do I play one more creature? Maybe I cannot be the removal because they usually have sweepers, but also more removals, right? So you have to decide 
do I play my second creature or not? Because if I play two, maybe they kill. Uh, that's that's what we're going to see here. Super tricky to play around the sweeper spells for the for the players. And now we are uh, we are checking the cards to put in to put out. We're going to see the cyber out. About yeah. the about the cyber cyber out of the Temur Temple deck. We're seeing the Philip what checking out. What is the out. plan for the deck of well, more type? Philip is taking out some Ragavans. I think he took an iteration out. I'm not sure. I definitely Ragavan is not a very good card against scales because Ballista, Hangable Walker, that's a lot of blockers. I will expect Philip to take a more control control approach. So using the question roots and the iterations, like especially like to grind the games a little bit. We see a counter spell. Counter spell not as good as it looks because you know it's like sometimes a little bit slow. You see Ragavans there, some iterations. I like iteration in the matchup for Cyborg, but it's true that sometimes against the scales you get not tapped out because they have an excess, they have a scales, some creatures, and if you play iteration tapped out, they just play Ravager and, and combo kill you, right? The way the combo kills work is you put counters on the Ravager, make it large, and then you pass the, the counters to the nexus. The thing is, if you have the hardened scales, it's very fast to actually have a 10 power nexus. It's a nightmare for the player. It's very, very it's hard super, to play against. It's yeah. Super hard. Like, scales is hard to play. But it's way harder to play against because when you're playing scales, it's like you see the you see the puzzle, right? Like it's it's you know like fairly straightforward. Sometimes sometimes it's hard though. But playing against is way harder because when you're playing scales, you know your information. Like you have your puzzle. Yes. It can be hard, but you have like these three cards and these three lands or whatever. But playing in front, you have to imagine, have to think about all the combinations they could have, and that's tricky. You know, you can be like, I lose to Ravager plus Worker, or I lose to Ravager plus a Zero Drop, or whatever, you know, and you have to think all the lines before they happen, which deck you are not playing, so you presumably know it less, and that's, that's, very, that's very hard. I think Scales is, for me, the hardest deck to play against in the whole format, for and, that reason. Uh, Luis Gobern, a very known player, is uh, playing this, a hardened Scales. He plays so well that deck, right? Yeah, I mean, he's a long time, he's an he, uh, old uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> regular player from the <laughs> GPs, you know, in Central Europe. Like, and this is a mulligan now, right? They're just, they're just shuffling. No, just uh, shuffling the decks. Very important part of the, <laughs> of the run, <laughs> as usual. And, uh, well, let's see if uh, Philip with this more tight deck, can uh, any, any chances to win the match yet? Well, I think this is going to be different to the one before. The one one we talk about, like how the mulligans were the 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 early game. Remember, we saw a lot of mulligans. I didn't expect this to be the case here. Like, more tight if you have three lands, four spells, you're going to keep. And in this matchup specifically, scales are also going to keep those hands. You know, like I want to see the early game is going to be the first turns. Like we are not going to see a two turn two turn game or something like this, which could have happened with Hammer. This is going to be more traditional creature slash aggro against mid range magic range that goes to play control games. Well, will we see the first hands? Uh, maybe Mulligan, maybe not. Well, I think will it's a keep see? for both players. Yeah, but we have wow. Ragavan. Well, you know what's a good feeling? When you leave, I, th I think he left to Ragavan. When you leave one Ragavan or two in your deck and you open it, you open it in your starting hand because that's where Ragavan is best and you don't want to draw Ragavan later, but you have only one. So you do it, so you know there's oh. no Ragavan <laughs> left in your deck, but you have it there. So it's just a good, great feeling. <laughs> All right, well, scales no, no, for the scales. We see yeah. a, a, a stern scolding in Philip's hand. It's a, the counter spell for one mana. That they got popularized to counter cards like Reef, but it's actually very good in matchups like this. It just counters all the the Ravagers, Hangover Walker, Ballista, because those creatures are least like they're just not large enough to you know avoid getting countered by this the scolding. And one mana to counter your key cards is a lot. Yes. Very, yeah, I very think sweet, very yeah. sweet turn here. Yeah, it's um, well, Ragavan stole an Arkborn Worker, but Worker doesn't do much for the Mortar deck. Drawing cards. We don't know if it's he's gonna play the Mort the Arkborn Worker. I will suspect he's not going to. Like a one one for one mana that does nothing. I don't think you wanna play the Worker. The Worker he stole with the uh, Ragavan. I mean. Yes, it's with is rebuilt with the yeah, Ragavan. He decided not to play it. He's. Leave up the mana of counter spells. Yes, exactly. Good. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Let's uh, see the second turn, the second hardened scales for Luis Gobern. Not as good as it looks, though. Like scales is good, but usually it's not like amulet where you get two amulets and your opponents die. Here yes. it's like, well, sometimes you have two scales and you don't have enough yes. creatures. Nah. Like you play a creature <laughs> and they kill it. And but Usa Saga 
can provide for um, different uh, features. I don't think he has. I don't think Philip has an answer to to sag in his hand. He has, you know, some moons in the sideboard, but more preordain. Yeah, preordaining. Uh, counter spell on the top. On the top, I guess. Yep. I guess. Yes. Well, but spell. counter spell is good, but it doesn't answer the saga. Like he has to answer the saga, otherwise saga is gonna be like two creatures, and that's a lot. And he chooses not to play the stirrings, by the way. Stirrings can only find lands in his deck, so I think it's reasonable. This is a, an argument you can find explosives with the stirrings, and explosives could kill the the uh, scales. I think that could be no reason. To play the strings, but then the kind of spell he has in his hand becomes way worse. So I think it, this was a very close um, decision. I think both directions have some merit. And well, Philip elected to play the you know more defensive line with the kind of spell, choosing to keep the treasures. Oh. Well, all right, uh, Luis Gubern, listen, my face playing the second saga, and go ahead. He just went for the saga game. Need, uh, Luis need creatures, right? Well, he needs answers to the saga creatures. I mean, the best one is Dress Down. That's the key card, I think, also in this situation. Or Brotherhood Send, Explosives. That's some cards. There's a lot of cards, actually, he can draw into to actually solve the sagas. Uh, he, I don't think he has any of in his hand, though. Like, there's a lot of cards, sure. They all win the game, sure. But, well, they're not there. <laughs> and if um, we know what they? Saga does, right? Saga, if, if you don't answer the Saga, it's going to be token, token, get an artifact. It's going to be a lot of business turns for... This is the Robert. fourth preordain for yeah. Philip. No more preordain in the deck. Yeah, that's a lot of digging, though. Yeah. He goes instantly bottom two again. He's no, throwing a lot no of sweeper. cards. Yeah, he's just looking for the sweeper for the Saga tokens. But And the last card is Question Druid. Which is more cars still to actually search, and Ragavan is getting there. Yeah, Ragavan Ragavan has a decision is here. He can, yes, can attacking block. again and again and again. But Ragavan can be blocked now by Saga. So the Gobern is thinking he has to choose between putting a creature now to kill Ragavan, or just holding, so it gets bigger. Let's yes. see what he does. Well, trigger. He didn't block. Resolve. He didn't block. So he's saying, "Look at this." He's saying, "The he's saying my token is much better than Ragavan, so I don't care about what you get." That that's. That's one of the reasons maybe that Ragavan is actually not that good in the matchup. Like the cards you get from scales, a lot of value in this yeah, token. They're right? not very good, you know. Yeah, the creatures are good, but like the cards, what are you gonna get? Like you're gonna get the Ravager, Worker, the Scales. They're just he actually flipped three good spells and they were not good. Ragavan is still good making treasures. So. Yes, a lot of copy of the same cards to Urtha Saga, three Hardened Scales, one is styled by the Ragavan, and four Preordains. We want to see more. Get more cards, different cards. Well, turn to govern. Well, Murtet 7-7, seven, seven, it's a large Murtet. Yeah. It's, it's uh, well... Super, it's super large. Tough turn dragon. for govern, yeah. Because um, Philip has mana up. Uh, presumably has some kind of counter spells. Apparently he has two... I think that's just two uh, stern holdings in his hand. One stern, I one guess. One stern, yeah. One stern, one counter spell, I think. One subtlety. I'm not... Like, the arts sometimes of the cards are a little bit crossed. Uh, I love the arts, the sacred layer, the yeah. arts. But he's just electing not to put token with the saga. <laughs> okay. Urtha saga, the third level. Urtha's ballista, what artifact? I mean, Osalit is one of the usual suspects here. It's a good card. I don't think he has a great. He can get the, the wasp, the, the sabbat, yeah. So I don't know the next other sab sabbat, like the, the, um, the modular one, the legendary one. And the, um, th this is a card that gets fl against flying, right? That that's that's just like this is what you need to block the Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah, that's Sabbath. the one you use to to block the flyers. But it's gonna be tricky. Like it's a three three, of course. Uh, but that's not necessarily good enough to actually beat uh, the Mortite. Good thing though for him is I can see the more land. Philip doesn't have removal, right? Like Philip has like a lot of counter spells, but nothing to actually interact with creatures. So there's. There's a spot where, you know. Styrians looking yeah. for more artifacts. Well, or a Nexus, actually. I think Nexus, so with two scales, if you get a Nexus and yes. Sebast dies, uh, Nexus becomes a six. Uh, it's three, so you get plus two counters. So you will get three plus three, six, seven, seven. Huge. Uh, seven, seven, uh, effect. Uh, effect. Seven, seven, seven is enough to actually kill the Mortite, right? Infect the K. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's. You know, I think he was actually looking for an access here. Uh, he didn't get it, so he got for Ravager. 
Ravager was. Ravager is going to eat water. the counter, right? Like, <laughs> I think he knows that Philip must have counter spells here. So, and third saga. The third? Yeah. Whoa. Urtha saga again and again. Well, the thing is, this saga can actually get more Sabas and. Okay, yeah, show me calling. show me your counter spell. Yeah, he he got a counter spell out. So that's the thing. Like Kalen scales with the Ocelot and Sabat, they just go very fast killing people. Like I could see Gobern reaching a board state where the creatures are larger than Mortite. It's a little bit convoluted to follow sometimes. But basically every time you do a transaction of counters with the deck, every time you put a counter of Sabas or modulate or whatever, you get another one. Like for each scales and Having two, we said like it's not great because you don't have too many creatures left. But if you have creatures, it yeah. just goes crazy. Like like it's very easy to actually find combinations of lethal. And we might see like this game is way closer than what it looks. It looks like Mortid is easily winning. That's not this whoa. Brotherhood Sand of the top. Did you see that? Yeah, Boom, absolutely. Bah. Well, that's, that's I was looking that's, for the auto lead, but <laughs> that's enough. That's, that's enough. That's well. Govern says like, well, that that's the card we said. We said before, this is the key card, right? This is the card that Govern pretty much ever, never can beat. Like to beat this card, you have to be like main in your own turn, in your own main phase. You put you go all in on your nexus, so you kill your board before they actually kill it, banking on the fact that they cannot kill the nexus if it's large. There's something that used to be done like in the old Affinity Days in the standard back in the 2002 Whoa. or something. All times. Yeah, against Wrath of Wrath God. Of right? times. You used to go Ravager and just put your counters on Blink of Nexus so they cannot Wrath of God the la land. There's something similar here. That's the only way you can actually play well around the, the Brotherhood Sand. But it does, I mean, those kind of lines exist sometimes. The issue is you actually lose you know, equity against the other type of hands, but uh, that's also, you know, risk. That's why magic sometimes is interesting, yes. right? This you play around one card, <laughs> you lose to the other, right? This and, is the magic uh, you know. of the magic, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, plays bad against Otawara, for example. For you know, example. It, it, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's so, it's so tricky. Well, we are on the third game of this run, third game for the third round in this Grand Open qualifier. We have a very sweet matchup here with a very different... Uh, deck with these hardened scales and uh, this uh, Timur Murktide deck, very uh, uh, spicy Murktide with this, this green color in the deck. Yeah, I actually think green should probably be better in the mirror match, I assume. Like, if I had to guess, this is Philip, this is something like he might have played thinking of, well, it's gonna be a lot of mirror matches, so I'm gonna play green so I can actually get, because iteration is often what defines mirror matches. Unless you die to a Ragavan on the early game, whoever draws most iteration is like, I'll draw more cards, I'm winning. And Custom Druid is like, you draw two more cards, but also have a creature. So it's, it's, you know, it's a good card. Like, even if it's a small splash, it's like one within, you know, with Wild Ball Land and two Custom Druids, you can already get some advantage. So. We saw this Ragavan not mm, hitting enough to win the game. Yeah, I think Ragavan will probably sabotage out on the draw. Like, he left one or two, I think. Uh, on the draw, Ragavan gets worse. And also Mortide, a little bit more of interaction if that's possible. But um, I mean, the options you have once you put all the good cards are limited. So it's like you choose between a bad card and a bad card. Yes. You know, like it's very close. So I think having different, like one of each or whatever is actually better because even if a card's worse, sometimes it's good. But so, you want to avoid the situation where you draw a card and it's bad in multiples, right? Like if Ragavan is bad, you want to draw not more not. than one or whatever. So we saw this aborting here from Philip. Okay, let's go uh, with the hands. First hands, maybe keep. I don't Look. think Govern has many lands, does he? No lands. No I mean, lands. I don't see many lands. This is our I saga. mean, it said, I think I see two lands. It's it's not very easy to see it, but it's a flooded strand and a, and a spiral of canal, I will say, which is like keep, easy keep. And easy Govern. Keep. I think Govern has a one lander, right? It's a saga and that's it? Mm. I don't think so. No, oh, it's oh, an Nexus. It's what an Nexus. Nexus. It's an Nexus. All right. Nexus is... Okay. Well, Nexus is a key card for the deck. and Arbon Ravager. Work. It's a worker, I think. It's, yeah, a, it's worker, a worker. It's a worker. Yeah. Yeah, Ravager is a big brother. Yeah, it's, yeah <laughs> it's the biggest. Worker, I think, uh, it's not exactly a stock card in the scales deck. It used to be before, but he used to, I think uh, Gobern just elected the worker to actually try to speed the clock up. Usually, the decks play more... Uh, Patchwork automaton and not that many one drops, but I think 
that's actually a very reasonable approach because if you're trying to beat decks like Amulet or, the su or the such, Worker actually kills very fast. Like if you have a Scales, for example, and one way to sacrifice a Worker, that's, you know, plus four counters, that's a lot. So I think that's the, um, the approach we took. All right, is well. that another Nexus, I think? Yeah. Yes. So for one, one damage, time. 19 more turns, and the game's over. Well, this is a hand that's very solid, like Hangarable Walker, one of the key cards also in the matchup, because it's hard to deal with in a way where, you know, you can, the, the scale spoiler doesn't get value. But, um, no scales, right? No scales, no, no scale. solid. That's, that's Luis Gobert well. needs the scales to make the, the deck works, and didn't draw right now. Well, that's the thing, like, if you don't draw scales, your deck is very, like, <laughs> underwhelming but it still functions like it still functions and the cards still work like hangover walker is a, a decent card in this kind of matchups in a way i think that's a scales but no green mana maybe no green mana only i think so only mana for uh, from this uh, nexus okay you look at the hand from the mortar side enough enough to play yeah. some artifacts but not enough to play the biggest spells like hardened scales of the deck yeah but you can just po like i think this turn if nothing happened this turn it will not be very bad for Govern. Like, if he plays a creature, a random creature, and he gets countered, well, it's one damage already. And then, Hang Up Walker gets one more counter. Like, I think it's fine for him to, for the game to not go fast. He He's can, thinking uh, the, the, he, the possibilities. Yes. Very difficult right now, without green mana. Yeah, I don't know if that's a saga. Okay. Left, this, uh, okay. This Fury Worker is attacking right now. <laughs> <laughs> if he's angry, you know. Very Fury, attack. only one damage, but very Fury. He's definitely, you know, doing his business attacking there. And that's, that's, that this is, is what, a... I don't know what I, ah, it's a pathway, right? Will we see? I guess, it's yeah, a pathway. it's a pathway. Yeah, it's the a green... the check card. So, they, they so... This, he actually has the mana for the scales, yes. right? Yes. He was thinking if he was going to play scales or not. Uh, very sweet here. Which I assume... Green mana, hardened well, scales for Luis Gobern. Well, if scales resolves, he knows for certain that Philip doesn't have counter spell. What well, resolves? That's going to complicate life for Whoa, Philip. Look resolves? at this. Like, Gobern has another hang-up and walking in his hand, but he knows like it's almost impossible for Philip to not have anything here. If he doesn't have a counter spell, he doesn't have creatures, well, he has answers or sweepers, right? Like, he has all the answers, like subtlety, you know, iteration, scalding, uh, stern scalding, brotherhood sense. So he decides to not, not to stay in more and just play, like, slow with the Hunger Bar Walker. And I think well, that's a very really difficult pull, right? spot yeah. for Philip needed yeah. to respond to these, uh, these cards, these very good cards. Uh, read here. Yep, an adventure with a badger token. He's prepared. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, the thing is, Philip has Stop explosives. Me. Oh, that's that's counter spell. That's spell pierce and salty. That's the cards he cannot play out of the druid. That's very unfortunate, right? Yes. And now we see Walker getting two three counters. Three counters wow. starts being dangerous, right? Like it's one turn away of getting out of the bold range, and it's not gonna go any anywhere soon. Like it's you know like Philip doesn't have a kill spell for the Walker. Oh. He has the explosives though. So he can actually kill it, but then the tokens come back. That's the thing. Like, hang up a walker, you have to kill it kind of twice, right? I, I will say Philip is in a very dangerous situation. Very uncomfortable, this hang yeah. a walker. Yeah, walker. It's, it's annoying. Hang up a yeah, walker is yep, preordained for Philip. Looking for, I guess, sweepers. A Murted also will be fine, but well, not. Philip. Philip has a bunch of lands. What is the play, Philip? Well, so he has lands, subtlety, lands, choose, and choose wisely. Explosive. Why it's so difficult? It's so difficult to play against hard and scale. Very difficult. A lot of decisions. Like if you tap out here, like you could be yeah. like he plays a druid. If he plays a druid here, he might die. Yes. If if Logan has a ravager, he's dead on board. And that, that's very rough, you know. Explosive for zero. Absolutely. Zero kills the jar and the hammer walker. Um, that's it. Explosives kill the jar that is protecting uh, the other. Yep. Yeah, but the other I mean, artifacts. The thing is, uh, Philip doesn't have anything that makes him progress very much, and this is a situation where Philip just like every turn that goes like this, 
Gobern keeps keeps having like more and more value, and Philip doesn't evolve his, his game state more uh, like much. So we're gonna see. I think Gobern is gonna try just to leverage his creatures. Yeah, okay. attacking for four here. Like he's gonna be like, okay, you have a spot here. I don't care. Like you're gonna crack the spots for this. That's fine. This is a you take this four. This is a difficult clock. Yeah, it, th this clock. this matchup is is definitely hard to play for both players. Like also for Gobern, he knows he's ahead. But since it's Poseidon, he knows the threat of like Brotherhood Ten is there, right? Like if if Philip goes explosives into Brotherhood Ten, Govern has a board no more. Like he's just like left with nothing. So he has to attack a little bit more than he will like otherwise. But I think this is you know interesting attack because he could have choose to not attack with the Hangover Walker and just put more counters. I think that's maybe also good. But he uses to push the life totals. Me too. Bit Very interesting this uh, attack here. Philip is feeling this pressure of this uh, hangar hangar back walker for damage. Oh, yeah. And uh, wow, Luis not only attack is playing uh, cards too. A patchwork automaton. This is the one that's usually a little bit more stock over the walker. Gobern is playing both uh, in the small numbers. Uh, I like that a lot actually. I think. Uh, Diversifying your threats in aggro decks, especially if it's a cure based deck, it's actually good. The Automaton has yeah, Ward yeah. 2, notably good against removal spells. And we see an end of turn explosives, which is basically going to take only the jar. Yes. Right? This threading two cards. And look, that why, Walker, this is a very, why did, very why huge... did the Walker die? It doesn't die. Yeah, it costs one. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they fixed it. This fix it fast. That was fast, Yaj. Thank you. One, 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 yeah. one counter, one, one, one. Yeah. and and tapped. Yeah. And then reading the automaton. Okay. Well, DRC for Philip, it doesn't do much, does it? Uh, like it blocks. Like he has he has to play it, but Dragon Raid Channeler for Philip. Yeah, like it doesn't do that much. His channeler go. Like this is interesting. Philip doesn't really have an answer. For uh, has spell snare, but he doesn't have a creature removal like a bolt or a hit. But Gobern also doesn't know, right? So even if Gobern could go for lethal here, he will just not go for it, right? Because as we said before, and we you know will say many times across the weekend, like it's very easy to play magic if you know your opponent's hand, but it's very hard if you don't. So hard. And if you are Gobern here, you have to be aware that your opponent might have a lot of removal. Absolutely. Be shout out to our amazing Jets. Yes. Always yes. making a very good job. Or Jets. So, I think Philip passed the turn. And Gobern is thinking end of turn, I think. That's the state. I'm not super sure, though, what's happening. I think Luis uh, feels comfortable right now. Yeah. Some, some of them, some is, yeah, no. Luis is in the driving seat here. Like, Luis knows things have to go very wrong for him to lose the game. But the thing is, Brotherhood 10 can actually happen. Like, game, game two, that's how, you The know, sweeper, yes. Like, if Brotherhood 10 happened here, like, if he goes, like, you know, bolt on the walker. Okay, it was Gobern thinking on the turn, dismember the DRC. I think Gobern probably acknowledges DRC is not great, but still, like, he doesn't have any better target for this member, and that's good because he got the counter spell out of the way. He doesn't know uh, Philip has some spells there, of course, but Mortite goes Mortite to the beam. On the... Well, if you, are, I fly. if you are Gobern, this tells you a lot because Mortad is presumably a card you want to have in the matchup. It's a big fire, it just wins the game. But if that's only true if you survive. So I think from, for Gobern, from Gobern's perspective, if I'm playing the scales, I see this Mortad in the graveyard as a sign of like my opponent's hand is weak. Because if it was a good hand, he would be like, you know, I, I want the Mortad because I'm going to kill your hand board with uh, Brotherhood and then like. Uh, I'm going to just win the game with it. But more than going to the graveyard tells us, or Gobern in this case, about the Phillips hand. You know, it tells us how the hand is not particularly strong, which well, I think Gobern is going to read as like weakness. So. Yes, the second hangar back walker. More pressure, more presence, and a table for Luis Gobern. It's time to get in with all yeah. the team. Yes. Well, not all the team, but the, the ones that can attack. No, because you don't want to hang up a walker to, to die, I think, right? That's why he's thinking. He's doing the math if he can go lethal into turns. He wants to trade. Yeah. Okay. So he knows for kind of he knows for sure that Philip doesn't have the Brotherhood Ten in his hand because he will have kept the the Mortite. The, the sorry, the, the Mortite on top, yeah. So he's thinking now, like, okay, I am ahead here. Does attacking here and losing the walker to the DRC 
make me in a, put me in a spot where if he top decks the Brotherhood 10, do I lose? I think he's now thinking through beating a top deck Brotherhood 10 or a top deck explosives. I think that's what he's thinking uh, right now in this attack. And I think his attack says, like, he's going to say, no, I think I'm actually better not attacking. Like, I don't need, Gobert doesn't need to end the, um, the game, the turn now, the game now. Like, what's going to happen? What's the worst going to happen? The sweeper? Well, sweeper leaves Gobert with six tokens. Yes. So it's like two sweepers. So he's very comfortable here, just chilling, attacking for this. If he attacks for five, that's fine. And if he gets a trade, that's also good. Very secure situations for Luis Gobern. Very comfortable. This uh, trade, uh, the players are thinking about uh, the trade of the this uh, creature. Yeah, I think he has the. I think the, Philip has the lyrium. But the thing is, Philip wants to block the patchwork probably uh, because if he was the walker, that means another creature gets two counters, and and this is very bad, right? Because if he, two more counters get on the hand of a walker, he can barely just he just go to one if he goes to sweeper. Like he blocks, he actually dies, right? Because he blocks, he has to fetch. Yes. He's so, actually, actually yeah, die, yeah. Yeah. So he if he blocks the patchwork, that's better. But it's definitely yeah, that's I think that's a good block because otherwise it would be dead even if he draws a sweeper. But he has to draw, I think, two sweepers. And that's Whoa. that's a lot of sweepers. Patchwork know? is treading this uh, dragon rage channeler. Yep, so eleven life and big draw step here. I think a blank or semi blank honestly like anything that's not a bomb will actually close the game here for Govern, I think. Well, Philip. Draw the good card. Come yeah. on. Come on. <laughs> we, want, <laughs> we want more game. It's Brotherhood Sand mostly, but I guess Dress Down into removal will also work. Look. Well, the, not, the best, perfect one will be Dress Down into Brotherhood okay. Sand. That would be the best. Precipitation. Drawing card. Into... Looking for this Brothers Hand. That's not. not... It's a DRC, a land, and another card in his hand. DRC has to be paid for, though. Yeah. <laughs> Can uh, can res can uh, can resist one or more the, with this? Uh, I mean, yeah, trading? he's not going to die, die. But the thing is, the hangover walkers yes. will put him enough low life that if Philip casts Brotherhood's End, the tokens from the hangover walkers will actually kill him. Go ahead. So it's not uh, dead by you know by the book, but it's going to be in a position where I think there will be no outs for him to actually come back. After this turn, we'll see, though. I mean, well, DRC is a good blocker, but let's see what happens now. Well, so, Hugo Baron is probably going to send the team. Okay, yeah. Nexus is a, is a creature right now, and okay. attack with two creatures. Go Baron goes, Go Baron goes full playing, you know, playing chill. Like, he doesn't even want to attack with the Hang of Walker. He's full, like, I'm going to put five counters on each, and I know your deck. Like, Timur, there are no cards in Timur that exile too many creatures, right? So... Okay. I actually this think this DRC is like yeah, this is, is a good blocking. example of uh, stopping to actually pressure more. Like yes. by attacking here, Cobern will actually deal more damage. Yep. But he will he will open the possibility of the Brotherhood Sand actually becoming better because you block the hunger bug, put three tokens, and then you Brotherhood Sand, and then he puts only three tokens. So attacking actually puts less pressure. Like this is not attacking, but actually puts more pressure because now Philip cannot Brotherhood Sand. So he's actually playing against the top, the good top deck here. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap? It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap for Philip. Well, the thing is, this could go wrong in a way. Like, imagine Philip goes, like, iteration into Mortet and Bolt, right? And then Mortet can actually block the Hunger Walker. Like, in Magic, even though, like, I think this play by Gobern is extremely good. I actually think it's the best play, but it also, even if it's the best play, it opens possibilities. Like, sometimes you make the best play, but you actually open a combination of cards that you lose to that you will beat, though, playing worse. And, and that's just magic, you know? Like yeah, That's one of the things magic. that make... It's so hard sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> that makes magic unique, unique and beautiful, you know? Like, they yeah, just never... Totally. The, 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 yeah. The, all the decisions you yeah. need to take is so difficult and beautiful. Okay, that <laughs> unholy hit. Um... Well, unholy hit, that's tricky. I think he probably needs to kill one of the hunger bags. Just to open the top deck situation, yeah. Put okay. five tokens, which is a lot, but just he, he can survive one turn and then draw like. Um, he is uh, trying to cast a spell to 
uh, gain he, more time. He has Tishana, time. right? He has that's a Tishana. Tishana in the hell? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. this is a Tishana. Yeah, Tishana is good here. Counter on the trigger of the hangar back. Oh, Tishana doesn't die. Yeah. Wow, Tishana, very good card. A new card in the, in the meta. Yep, so actually that was very bad for Govern, but still in the driver's seat. Uh, now, Govern is like, okay, like I'm still very ahead, but now this DRC is there. And, um, you know, like, if I lose the Hangover Walker, like, Ota Wad on the Hangover Walker actually puts the game even. So at this point, Govern was very ahead, but this turn was extremely good for Philip. He used all the walkers while still having a healthy life total and has some blockers. Now Govern is... Seeing a burn. I think, I mean, he's still a little bit ahead, but not by a lot. Like, his game depends on the Hangover Walker, which obviously is very hard to solve. But if it's solved, it's going to be very bad for him. The second hardened scales, the enchantments, yeah. and I thought uh, we got Well, there's a world where Govern could actually not uh, attack here with Hangable Walker and just put it to seven counters. He's actually thinking of that. The reason for that is uh, because if you put Hangable on seven, it doesn't act on Holy Hit. Okay. And that looks like not relevant, but it is actually very relevant because the, the thing is... What's an happening with the Shogland? Uh, I don't know. They're... Well, I don't know what the... What happened here with the Shoglands? Well... <laughs> I mean, I don't know what happens with the drop trigger. I don't know, but... I mean, I assume God, he casted the green card with the green... Uh, Maybe oh. he missed he miss physically the, the, the bad, the, the growth, but he has one green mana for the scales and colorless for the other one. Uh, anyway, like... Anyway, so I was yes. saying, like, the not attacking with the Hangable Walker here has the upside of you actually put it on seven or eight, so it doesn't add to, to the um, ha unholy hit. Because now Govern has to pump the Nexus, yeah. Nexus is going to be a 4-4, which is obviously large enough, but here... Very if big, Philip, it's Nexus right now. Yeah, but if Philip... 4-4. Four, four, but if Philip draws a holy hit, he can actually get back into this game. Okay, show your hand, Philip. So DRC, is snare, is that and hit? that's Artemage Charm, which actually steals whoa. the Hunger of Walker. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Look that hand. Okay, you see another, the second one, attack with the two creatures. 11. Actually, I think Gobert now is going to regret uh, attacking with that Nexus before. Turn before, remember the, the one where we put the, he put the counter on the on the DRC? And that's that's strong. Like Charm now. and snare. Whoa. The Charm Char was a very good draw, right? Well, Charm still the Hangover Walker. It's like the only clean answer he has in the whole deck, I think. Right? Uh, yes. It's going to be very good okay, here. Just still the creature. Adam Charm is sick top deck here. I think also Philip has uh, one more, one, one Nexus counter only. So it's like, uh, Philip okay. ca uh, Govern cannot actually kill him. I think he has Forest in hand, right? He needs to top deck something huge. Whoa, 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 look that. Still He's the, actually threatening the lethal. Oh, this, this, what a game, huh? Like, it looked like wow, I had it yes. all locked. It was like... This is crazy. This blue red deck just going back, like, for this game. That was great. And now Govern draws another scale. There's nothing. And... I don't see a way out for Govern, do you? He can... He can scale. block. And the hand, I can see. I can see the hand. Well, he can block, but, like... He blocks, he takes, like, say, 11. He's a 9, I think. I think it's, 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 it's all for it. Oh, wow. okay, hand. What a game. What a grain, what a round. So crazy games. It is run with these uh, hardened scales and Temur Temple. 